priority. In charge. Nightmare. My intro would be something like this. say something that would make the entire audience uncomfortable. It is time to hit the hitters. It is time to smash these people. It is time to make Nancy Pelosi and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Chuck Schumer afraid to leave their homes. I want every one of you to hire somebody that is going to stalk these people. I want you to destroy their lives. If they're cheating on their spouses, I want you to get video evidence. If one of them is, a, is an alcoholic, I want you to get evidence of it. Destroy these people personally. If you're not willing to do that, get the hell out of the way. Because this is what they're doing to you each and every day. You have, for three presidential cycles, been reserving your worst tactics for your own kind. You don't have the guts, you don't have the balls, you don't have the spine to attack them. You attack your own. This has to stop. These people need to be legitimately afraid of this movement. If you're not going to make them afraid, you are wasting our time. You need to embarrass them and shame them. You need to dig up dirt on them. You need to make them so afraid of you that they don't even want to run for re-election. You have to bring the darkness. If you are not willing to embrace the darkness, you are never coming into the light. You have to be willing to sink to a depth so low that Rahm Emanuel would say to himself, I can't believe they just did that. If you are not willing to wear brass knuckles, if you are not willing to engage in a street fight where there are no rules, then get the hell out of the way. You are trying to fight a boxing match and these people are kneecapping you at every single level. State, local, and federal. This has to stop. You have to play their game and you have to play it better. You have to be willing to destroy people here. I mean it. No more rules. No more status quo. No more bipartisanship. No more, can't we just respect each other and have a conversation? There is no conversation. These people are using the IRS. If you are not willing to get into this fight and you're not willing to draw swords, then get the hell out of the way. If you left it to me, I would fire Reince Priebus and I would fire every single upper echelon staffer at the RNC and I would replace every single one of them with the dirtiest bastards I can get my hands on. And that would also mean getting rid of Karl Rove. I need thugs. I need street fighters. I need people who don't have sympathy or feelings when it comes to this stuff that are willing to fight in the gutter with the gutter. If you're not willing to do it, get the hell out of here because you suck. Understand this, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and John Boehner, we constitute the majority of this movement, not you. We're not gravitating to your position, you're gravitating to ours, or we're going to bury you too, politically speaking. I am so sick of each and every one of you. You have no idea what you're up against, or you do, and you don't care. No more Jeb Bush. No more Mitch McConnell. No more Mr. Nice Guy. It's going to be dark, it's going to be ugly, it's going to be bloody. The next time we get a lecture from someone about bailing out General Motors and they're driving a Japanese car, that becomes a campaign ad, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The next time they talk about Wall Street and greed and wealth, you make a TV spot with Barbara Boxers and Diane Feinstein's disclosure forms. That's how you do it. Oh, you're, oh, you're afraid of Ted Nugent? Ted Nugent should be the beginning of this. You're afraid of talk radio? That's nothing. If you're not willing to get dirty, and I mean dirty, even to the point where years from now, you might actually regret 
for destroying somebody's life, then stop playing games and let somebody else do it. Because they think, and the worst part is, you sat on your hands while the opposition said that your standard bearer killed a steel worker's wife. And what did you do? Nothing. They made something out of a family trip 50 years ago or 40 years ago with a dog on a roof of a car. And what did you do? Nothing. This war on women thing, you let it go. You let it go. Alan Grayson beat the hell out of his wife. Where's the ad? Where's the ad that shows the police report from Alan Grayson beating the crap out of his wife? Oh, he's just accused of uh, shoving her. No, he beat his wife. That's what you lead with. You lead with Alan Grayson beat the hell out of his wife. That's, that's what you say. We don't stand for wife beating around here. That's how it's done. Because you know damn well if one of you in attendance today was even accused of shoving your spouse, it'd be national news. And then that's the next thing. You have to take this fight to MSNBC and CNN and CBS and ABC and NBC. Do you want to know what brought down Chris Hansen, who we all thought was a hero, for To Catch a Predator? He got caught outside of a hotel room cheating on his wife. You have to expose every weakness of every single one of these journalists. The next time Andrea Mitchell edits a piece of tape, you need to destroy her. You need to find something corrupt or inhuman or wrong or criminal about her and then you have to exploit it and make her never, ever, ever want to go on camera again. If you don't have the guts to do that, you're weak. You're weak and you're pathetic. That's how it's done. If you can't do that, get out of the way. There is a new generation of people that are so sick and tired of the lecture every two to four years. Oh, give us one more chance. Give us one more chance. We're going to tell the American people what we stand for. What the hell do you stand for, Chris Christie? What do you stand for? You won an election because John Corzine was such a human piece of garbage that you won by default. Your only strategy for taking back the Senate is Obamacare. That people hate the Democrats so much that you'll win by default. That's not winning. You don't win a game because the other team screwed up their play. You win them by smashing them. And if you're not willing to smash them, then you're going to lose. These people are hell-bent on turning this country into a communist nation. And they are going to fight for every single government program to ensnare every single voter, to turn every single one of us into a sheep in a pen. You're either going to destroy these people or they're going to destroy us. And if all you care about is your place in the oasis, we are done with you. We are not about your oligarchy, or your ruling class, or your establishment, or your damn family name and dynasty. We are about freedom and liberty and living the life the American person is supposed to be allowed to live, with you or without you. And if you can't take it, get out. That's why I'm not invited to speak at CPAC. You want to know why I'm not invited to speak at CPAC? Because that's exactly what I would say. That was unscripted, that was unrehearsed, that was unprepared. I'm so fed up of the khaki pant, blue blazer, snob Republican who thinks we need to sit down and shut up and vote for the same lame, plain Jane, vanilla ice cream politicians every single year. If you're being honest with yourself, Paul Ryan sucks. Oh, he was the big hero on the ticket. Yeah, really? How did that work out? Every single time these people tell us who to vote for, we lose. And we don't lose elections, we lose our freedoms. We're losing our country. And if you think Chris Christie is going to be any better, you are kidding yourself. 
He stood there telling this audience, we have to tell everyone we, we have to tell everyone what we stand for. What do you stand for? They never tell you what they're actually going to do. Are you or are you not going to fight for this constitution? Are you going to fight for our freedoms? Are you going to fight for our liberty? Are you going to fight for the very soul of this country? Or do you want to win an election? There's a difference in that. That's why I'm not allowed to speak at CPAC. Because I would sound crazy to these people. And they would be so worried. Oh, oh my God, what's Anderson Cooper going to say? Oh, what's Rachel Maddow going to say? John Stewart's going to make fun of us. They already do that. You're already on the losing team. You're already the laughing stock. You're already getting made fun of. These people are colluding to destroy you. The last bastion of freedom in this country. And you are handing them the keys to the vault. So either fight or get out. That's it. That's how it's done. 1-866-95 Patriot. I'm sorry to say it. I'm willing to embrace the darkness of all this. Because you know where they learned this from? Saul Linsky. Saul Linsky has a chapter in rules for it. Let me take a sip of my coffee from the Capitalism his Boss coffee mug. Now that the uh, blood vessel on the side of my head is throbbing. Saul Linsky wrote a chapter in Rules for Radicals on tactics. And he tells the story of an executive at a corporation that he thought was worthy of destroying. And he said that somebody had slipped him some evidence of a homosexual relationship. And he says in Rules for Radicals that he would never want to go that far unless the ends justified the means. So he blackmailed the person. We know where the line is, and now we have to cross it. We know exactly where the line is, and we have to cross it. They will send their thugs to your house. They will send their thugs to your kid's school. They will send their thugs anywhere they need them to go. And you keep speaking of rules, and decorum, and civility, and these people are using proxies everywhere, on the internet, on the streets, in the newsrooms. And what are you talking about? We have to tell the people where we stand and create good middle class jobs. Well, good for you. Here's a heaping scoop of vanilla ice cream. Enjoy it. Because you're going to lose. Well, Andrew, we're going to win the Senate this year. whoop de doo you have a president that doesn't care what the Senate says. You have a president that doesn't care. You have an NSA that's wiretapping you. You have an IRS that's going after people by name. And what are you doing about it? Let's hold a hearing. Yes, let's have a hearing. If you're not willing to start destroying these people one by one like a game of whack-a-mole, they pop their heads up and you destroy them, then you're going to lose in the long run. We are turning into a banana republic. And if you think we're going to let you stay in the oasis, you are damn kidding yourself. one 96695